My guest today is Sarah Brent of Practical Harmony Professional Organizing. Sarah is a very successful student of the Inspired Organizer program that has recently stepped up to serve in a mentor role inside our course community. Sarah's past experiences have a strong impact on the way that she serves her clients, and she is joining me on the show today to share her origin story and why her mission is so important to her personally. My hope is that you'll leave this episode with a strong conviction that your own journey does not have to look perfect in order to help others. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Sarah, welcome back to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited. Yes, absolutely. So in case you're meeting Sarah for the very first time, Sarah Brent is um, a professional organizer in central Illinois. Her town is called Bloomington, Illinois. And she and her accountability partner, Cabri Carpenter, were on the podcast back on episode 23. In case you guys missed that, it was a really, really good one. The two of them are so dedicated to working on their business and their money mindset. It was really, really inspiring to chat with the two of them about that. But I invited Sarah to come on the podcast today to share a little bit of a different side of her story. So as we all know, becoming a professional organizer is not an easy decision. I think all of us probably came from very different backgrounds. Some of like I hear from a lot of people who say that they have literally been organizing like their toys and their books and their school stuff since they were three, four and five years old. Like that was one of their earliest memories was being the girl who always organized everything. Um, and then every once in a while I'll hear from an organizer who says, well, I wasn't naturally born organized, but I became that way later in life in order to be better with school or be better at work or be better with my family. And Sarah has one of those really unique stories. And so I wanted her to come on today to share with us really her journey of how she became a professional organizer and what it means to her to be able to impact people in this profession today. And I hope that this inspires you a little bit to share more of your story with your clients through your business as well. Sarah, where should we start? Do we start from birth? Like, oh. <laughs> what, what were you like as a child? <laughs> I have been going over my head, like, where do I start this story? Do I start at the end where I am now and reflect back? Do I start at the beginning of my whole life? Do I start at where <laughs> I decided to be an organizer? And then sometimes I think of like, I really have to frame everything and start like, before I was even born, because <laughs> that's, that's like a big part of it. So super nervous to just be sharing my story, like kind of officially for the first time, unless you've been around me my whole life, you really don't like know about my story. So it's like definitely opening myself up, but it's what I ask my clients to do all the time. So I figured it's kind mm. of my turn, my turn to do it. So I like that. Yeah. So my story, I feel like, really starts with my grandpa. Uh, his name was Merle, and he was born in 1910. So he grew up during the Great Depression and World War II and all of that. So their family obviously was like really affected by that and didn't have a lot. So he became a hoarder just through that. And I feel like that kind of happened a lot with families back then, just because you didn't know when you would have your next meal or new clothes or anything. So you just kept everything to try to reuse it for whatever purpose. So growing up, I had a grandpa who just was a hoarder and it was like a common thing. I really thought no different of it because that's just all that I knew. And his like hoard of choice was newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, so I have this like weird connection with newspapers. I, now that I'm like reflecting back on it, but like, his house that he lived in pretty much most of his life uh, just had rooms and rooms of newspapers and just stacks of newspapers, like as tall as he could stack it. And like, just 
I'm assuming dating back as, you know, long as he had lived there. And that's just like what I grew up around. And it's like, I, I was comfortable around it, but it's still as a child, like I knew it kind of bothered me that there was just like stuff everywhere, but I couldn't escape it because it just was family and it's what we were used to. Um, so eventually when he got older, uh, probably in his like late eighties, he, uh, ended up moving in with us when I was a kid. I was probably like, I don't know, eight, nine at the time. And that kind of changed like the dynamic of the household too, because he <laughs> would start to like hoard our items. Like mm -hmm. he was convinced that certain things were his. So he would take them and hide them in his room or he wouldn't like the way people like treated things. So he'd take them and hide them or just like the general like garbage things or what we considered garbage, recycling boxes, still newspapers, stacks of newspapers everywhere. And that just became another like common thing growing up was just stuff. Um, so that's kind of where it all came from for me. Um, but I definitely, had the same tendencies as a child. I had a very, I, I, I don't even want to say cluttered because it was so much more than cluttered. My room was like a chaos, like it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think I feel so comfortable walking into other people's homes and just like, I'm not scared of it. Like yeah. I see the challenge ahead of me, but it doesn't scare me or bother me or like freak me out in any way. Like I was just always around stuff and lots of stuff. Um, and now I just want to help people through the stuff. So I actually have these pictures that I've saved since I was a kid because I knew like I wanted to get organized, but I didn't really know how to do it. I was never taught how to do it. Um, so I took these before pictures of my bedroom. It's like, it's inspiring, but also sad at the same time, because it's great to see that I've gone from that to like where I am today. But it's sad to think that as a child, like I was never able to have that clean bedroom. I never had like the after pictures that I can, you know, mm -hmm. show today of the work that I've done. And it's just sad that I had to struggle through that as a child and really through my teen years and my early adult years until I was able to learn the skills that I did to make all the decisions with the clutter and to organize everything and just like live a completely different way than what I was used to as a child. So that's really like the setup of my history around just clutter and stuff. And not only is it just the stuff, but it's really like the mental mindsets that we have. My grandpa kept stuff because they were worried and it was just the just in case we need this just in case. And that lasted for like, you know, decades, like my mom's generation kept everything for just in case. And then we were taught in the beginning, keep everything just in case. And it was really just this scarcity mindset that we won't know when the next stuff is going to come. So keep everything. And then sometimes everything feels like it's comforting you because you have stuff. But then as I grew up, I felt like a lot of people just smothered under the stuff. Mm. And that's when I realized like, I can't keep saving for just in case because it, it's like literally like smothering me alive in my home and I don't enjoy my home anymore. So it was like tiny, tiny baby steps all throughout my life that led me from this very crazy, chaotic, cluttered existence that I grew up in and was so comfortable in to where I am now of being a professional organizer for five years and like feeling like, you know, I, I have normal clutter around my home, but I don't have rooms dedicated to it or garages mm -hmm. dedicated to it or anything like that. So it, it's really crazy, like I said, to reflect back on and see that and all the tiny little details that went into me becoming a professional organizer now. Sarah, what was your first memory of a time when your, your stuff, like you mentioned that to you, it was comforting. What was your first memory of a time when instead of it feeling comforting that you started to feel like you said that smother of like, it, it's, it's too much or it's overwhelming. Do you recall that? 
Yeah, it was when I was in my uh, like early adulthood. I had gotten married, and so we like blended two households, and we were pretty broke at the time because my husband was in school full time. So we had small apartments, and I just remember thinking, "Wow, I have so much stuff." And like even joining my husband's stuff, like we have so much stuff for just two people in this tiny apartment but I don't know what to do with it. Like, I can't make up my mind. I still at that time felt like I have to keep this all for some reason. I don't know what that reason is right now, but like it was ingrained in my mind, keep this. So I really was agitated all the time in my house, depressed all the time and just felt like, I felt like my, my, my home, my, my little bubble, my oasis was like just, strangling me from the inside out. Um, and I was just so miserable and unhappy then. And it was just all linked to stuff. Were you aware that it was, that that was what it was, or was it just sort of like a general anxiety? Like, did, did you know specifically it's the stuff that's bothering me so much? It took me a long time to realize like that was the culprit. I, like a lot of people always felt like, oh, it's a mess. I need to clean it up. I need to organize. Like I, I always knew I needed to organize, but then it took me a while to have that epiphany of like, aha, if I have less stuff to organize, then like, mm-hmm. it'll be so much easier. So like, I do remember, like it was a long time before I realized the stuff physically is what is making me feel this way emotionally. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of when I stood back and was like, this will be a lot of work, but like, I'm ready. I am so ready for this stuff to be gone because it is serving me no purpose. And I'm holding on to it for all these ridiculous reasons that I, at the time was starting to not believe anymore, not believe in the whole keeping everything just in case or, or keeping stuff because somebody gave it to you and like all that other stuff. What was it? Do you think that started to change those beliefs? Um, just becoming more aware and, uh, being exposed to more people my age that didn't grow up like that. So when I got married to my husband, we moved down to where he was going to school and we lived on campus, but in an apartment. So I was exposed to a lot more people that actually were a little bit younger than me, but, um, who were complete strangers. So they were all nice, awesome people. But when I'd invited them into my house, which I thought was, you know, a clean, happy place, I would hear the comment like, whoa, you have a lot of stuff. And I'd be like, ouch. Like, Mm -hmm. I always thought my home was like homey and comforting and like, you know, all these pillows and blankets and pictures and knickknacks. I thought they'd comfort people, but for people that weren't used to be surrounded by that all the time, like it overwhelmed them. And that's when I started to really realize that maybe this stuff is what is causing me overwhelm at times. Wow. Even though like I just had always seen it. So it was just, it was okay. So that kind of is what started that getting the outsider's opinion, even though it hurt me. Yeah. And at times I'm just like, ouch, keep your mouth shut. But (laughs) yeah, (laughs) I kind of needed it to really realize that I was living still with this weird mindset. Wow. Okay. That is so that's so interesting, but that was so insightful for you to be able to reframe it in that way instead of like, I mean, because I think that would hurt anybody's feelings, Yeah, you know, because it, it, you know, they're your things. They're like an extension of you, especially when you're basically still a kid or that's stuff that you brought from your childhood home into like your adult home. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. My heart just went out to you for that moment, <laughs> but, but the fact that you've been through that, how are you, like able to, um, I mean, because, because you have been through that, you're able to relate to certain, you know, clients in a very different way than other professional organizers are like those ones who've had organized Barbies (laughs) since age (laughs) five, you know? And, and so how do you communicate it? Like when you're talking to your clients, like, how do you say like, I get how challenging this is and also help build that bridge for them of 
you know, the things in your house might be affecting you like on a much different level than you even realize right now. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I feel like I should just be sharing more of my story for them to understand why I do get it. Cause I just kind Mm -hmm. of reaffirm that like, you know, like I, (laughs) I get it. Like I have been in your shoes. Um, I have been through the epiphanies that you're going through right now. And I completely understand what it's like to be in the position where your friends are talking about you trying to get organized. Your family wants you to get organized. Your spouse wants you to get organized, but none of them are really the ones who are able to help you. Um, And I knew that from the start, like that having friends come over and tear through your stuff wasn't going to make me feel good because (laughs) they, the ones close to you are kind of the snippiest ones at you. So yeah, I kind of reaffirm to clients that they have totally made the right choice calling in somebody who's professional and takes it seriously, who is unbiased and isn't going to say you're right, you're wrong. And is somebody who has experienced it and knows like emotionally the, like the weight that we carry from people's expectations of your house should be clean. It should be organized or you should be keeping these things because, you know, so-and-so wants you to keep them and just like all of it. (laughs) It's a lot of mental, um, the mental side of everything. I mean, that's really what it took for me is just like changing my mindset, my mind, and really realizing all of that. Um, and I want them to acknowledge that, but I also don't want them to dwell on that because I know what it's like to feel my own guilt of, man, I have spent way so much money on crap that is now filling up my garage that I don't need. I had all these great intentions. You know, I thought I was going to be a crafty person and do this project and that project, or I thought I was going to flip this or flip that. Yeah. And like, I know how hard we are on ourselves and how that is the main thing that stops us. So I also remind them that like, you know, have these epiphanies and realizations, but I'm there to be your cheerleader to say like, yes, you're growing, keep going, keep going. Like, don't stop on that and beat yourself up for what you're realizing. Just keep moving with it and Mm -hmm. grow through it all. So I am so curious for you, once you were able to start making that connection with like your clutter and how it was making you feel and that that wasn't necessarily the way that you had to live anymore, did you sort of go through your house and your life and do this like major like decluttering and cleaning overhaul or was it more gradual? It was like a little of both. When I was looking back, I realized that a lot, like I, in the past 12 years, I have moved 11 times on, and that's like an average, obviously of like once a year. And that naturally makes you go through stuff and get rid of stuff yes. usually for most people. So that helped a lot. I realized once I wanted to become a professional organizer and share my gift with people that I really needed to practice more of what I preached. So I knew that I needed to let go of a lot. So at that point, it was kind of, it's like an extreme home makeover. Like (laughs) I started in my garage because my garage was literally dedicated towards junk, never stored a car in there. And I just was like, we're cleaning this out. I'm done with garage sales. I'm done with selling stuff on Facebook. I'm done with collecting stuff because it's free. I was just ready to move on which is really what I want all my clients to do too, is just like, move on with it, get it out. Like yeah. if it's, if you're done with it, get it out. So there was times where it was a very gradual process, especially when it was just all new to me. But once it clicked, like I just kicked it into high gear because I was seeing the results after, you know, three hours of organizing my garage and having empty space and just being happy with the blank white empty space and feeling like, I can breathe easier right now. So it was a little of both. And it definitely caught my husband off guard. (laughs) 
Like he knew I was wanting to become an organizer, but I don't think he knew what he was in for, for me waking up <laughs> randomly and just be like, all right, today it's the kitchen and we're going to get rid of all these items because we haven't used them in the past year. And he's just like, I feel, I feel for him, but yeah. he's getting used to it. <laughs> hilarious so back then he was like checking the calendar like uh when do you project that this will stop yeah. <laughs> the total home makeover um okay so sarah it's a well-known thing in our industry that hoarders are like a really special level of you know being able to handle that with with care uh, because there is really a psychological component that goes along with it that um you know in general the advice is that you know, truly a hoarder really needs to, you know, go maybe have a professional organizer who is trained in working with hoarders and um, chronic disorganization to go along with like therapy or some other type of, you know, treatment. I am curious though, that because you have like lived experience through this with your family um, and to some extent with yourself as a kid, what insight do you have just like from firsthand um, as far as what it would take for a hoarder to like flip that switch of it being okay and like them feeling safe. I mean, I'm not sure if there's just one thing, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are about that. So what would make a hoarder feel safe or feel like they're ready to change? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. <sighs> It's tough because for me, I personally feel like that it is deeply rooted in some type of trauma in life. Mm. And um, I didn't see my grandpa ever receive help for his hoarding. So, you know, he passed away still having the same tendencies he always had. Um, but I do know that the big changes in my life came when I started seeking out help for my own issues, which I eventually realized is because of trauma in my own life. And it's, it's more than just the stuff. And I think that's what people are hooked on is family and friends. They see the stuff and they're worried about you because of the stuff, but you're holding on to the stuff for something that's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. And if you are somebody who is wanting to kind of start digging deeper into your feelings and traumas in your life or whatever you've been through and working those out, then you do start to realize the physical stuff is harming me as well. And I actually do have a client right now who has going through the same experience and she's amazing. She found me because her psychiatrist recommended she get an organizer. So she was not even thinking about going seeking help for clutter, but she knew that she was depressed and anxious and she was ready to make changes and was seeing him for a couple months and just kept bringing up, you know, clutters giving me anxiety, like clutter bothers me. And then he recommended her getting an organizer and that is really what clicked for her. And I like guarantee if she were to try to just hire an organizer before she was ready or realized the clutter was a problem, she wouldn't have kept up with it or she would have felt like I was invading in her territory and all of that. So I really feel like for hoarders or anybody who's dealing with clutter to be able to make those like big changes, it has to start with the inside and reflecting what is causing me this anxiety every single day or what is causing me to feel like I need to go collect stuff or go shopping or, you know, hang on to all this stuff because it's, it's something deep inside of us that has probably been there for a while and we just don't realize. But once you kind of realize the mental and emotional things and it just makes a lot more sense for all the physical things in your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's a really big takeaway for organizers out there who are listening especially when you're at the beginning of your business, I think it can be really tempting for someone who truly has a home that is too much for one, <laughs> for, for one organizer and also somebody who's not really officially trained in how to deal with hoarders. Um, it's too much to handle, but 
I th- I've, I've heard this happen so many times where a client's like, well, just come work with me on part of it or see what you can do with just a little bit of, you know, a few sessions or here and there. And I think it's really tempting to want to try to like make a dent and to help. But I think there is sort of, like you mentioned, there's so much more going on beneath the surface. It's almost, um, it's almost doing a disservice to, to try to like keep it at bay, even when there really needs to be like a full, like systematic change, um, psychologically and physically. Yeah. That's something that I actually realized I was doing at the beginning of my business is, I was getting these clients who I could tell that they weren't mentally ready. They wanted it out. And I was just like, okay, well, if you want to hire me, then I'll take the job and I'll Mm -hmm. help you. But I would feel bad kind of at the end or like it would just be a struggle to work with them because they weren't mentally there. So now I really take that time to ask a lot of questions about like, you know, where are you at with this? How are you feeling? Like, are you in the in the mindset to declutter and organize, like, are you ready to make changes? Not just, are you ready for your house to be clean? Because if we go in and we do that, you know, they're more likely to either just be really hard to work with because they're not ready or they'll just revert back to all their old ways and just fill it up again. So I really try hard now to make sure that they're kind of more mentally and emotionally aware of what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, what, you know, I'm just thinking back to like you as a little girl and like you said, you didn't know any different cause you grew up with it. So you were comfortable with it at some level. I am curious in your organizing business now, when you're working with families or kids, um, you know, what, what perspective do you have for kids? Like you said, who are like eight, nine, 10 years old at that age that you were that you most want to share with them or hope that you can pass on in terms of like habits for the parents to pass on to the children? So I love working with kids, obviously. Like, and when a parent is like, would you organize with my daughter? I'm like, yeah, like yes. just leave us alone and let us do our thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> one big thing I want the kids to take away is that this is something that you can learn to do just like tying your shoe or learning to write. Um, And just because you haven't learned it yet from your parents doesn't mean that, you know, you are a bad kid or you don't know better. Cause a lot of the times like kids are punished for not having a clean room. Mm -hmm, No, mm -hmm. parents don't really teach them how to clean their room. Um, So I want them to know that like, it's okay. It's something you can learn. And that like, I am there to like be your friend through it all and like guide you. I just working with kids is just like every client where I'm not coming in to tell you how we're going to do things. We talk about your room, how it makes you feel, what you like to play with most and just go through that and work through that. And I, one of my favorite clients is my nieces. (laughs) She's just so great to organize (laughs) with. And a lot of times kids know they like sorting things out. They like dumping out, you know, their Halloween candy and sorting out by color or whatever. They know they love doing that. And they don't realize that sorting things is really the first step in cleaning things up and organizing them. And when they put that together, they're like, you know, aha moment, like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. Like, why does my mom yell at me every day to clean my room? And they just don't put all this stuff together because I think sometimes the parents aren't really aware of how to teach them or how to pass on this knowledge to them. A lot of parents, it's just not their knack or their gift anyways. Um, So it kind of just, you know, like most things takes that outsider's perspective to come in and help set them up for success. And um, I also ask them most questions that I'd ask other clients, like, you know, how do you feel in the morning when you're getting ready for school? Or, you know, how do you feel in your room? And when we talk about, you know, I feel like my parents are always mad at me because I can't find my backpack or like, you know, I never know where my clothes are. We talk about easy things, you know, setting up your backpack the night before or organizing your closet in a certain way. And just really all of these simple little steps that they can be doing on their own that set them up for success and just being able to share them with them at such a young age 
makes me so happy because it was stuff that I didn't discover until later that I kind of had to discover on my own and really would have loved to have those little life tricks <laughs> at a younger age where I could be able to manage just my time as a kid and manage my mm -hmm. stuff as a kid because we don't ever think about kids time management or stuff like that. You're so right. You're so right. Um, I'm just curious, do you ever share with the kids that you work with what your room was like as a kid? I have never shown pictures, which yeah. I will be showing pictures eventually, but I tell them like, there's always a shock, but I tell them like, Oh, your room is nothing compared to my room. Right. Like, <laughs> not walk in my room. And like, you had to jump from the doorway to the bed. And that was like, the only path was jumping from things in my room. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of parents are just hesitant, like, you know, oh, isn't this going to gross you out? Or like, is this going to scare you away <laughs> in my kid's room? Because the kid's room scares the parents. But I'm just like, let me in there. Like, let me in this. Let me work with them. And I would rather me working with the kids than the parents getting frustrated and just bagging everything up and throwing it out. Cause you know what, that's what my parents did. And that doesn't help because <laughs> yeah. it just makes kids want to latch onto their stuff even more. So that's so insightful. And that, I think that also makes you the coolest organizer ever because you can <laughs> really say like this, this has nothing on like what my room was like as a child. And so, I mean, I feel like these kids, they got to respect that. Plus, you know, when you have your aunt organizing with you, that's got to make it even more fun. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. Do you see, do you see kids, um, able to make that connection on their own between like you said, you asked them, how does your room make you feel like, do they sometimes say, you know, I love having all these toys, but to be honest, do they ever say things like it was really overwhelming to me or I, I really don't like being in here? Yeah. You know how like kids like have no filter, like mm -hmm. they make those connections and say them so much faster than parents or adults because they're not thinking all these other thoughts. Like, uh, should I feel guilty about this? Should I feel bad about this? Like yeah. kids express all the time. I have too many toys and I can never find the toys that I want. Yeah. And they're not afraid of saying that because they're not connected to, Oh, but grandma gave me this. I got this. Yeah. Number. I got that. <laughs> like they're just telling you how it is. They're telling the truth is they're overwhelmed with their stuff. And I just like, I laugh all the time when I'm working with kids because it's just like, please, I wish my clients would talk like this all the time. Right. I wish they would just be like, you're right. I get it. Like, why am I stressing out about this? Yeah. Because as soon as they get it, they announce it. And then it just becomes the truth for them. Like my niece, when she realized she had four or five Elsa dolls, she's like, I do not need this many. I only need one. Mm. This one is my favorite. Why did I ever have that many? And just like, I love it. And she moved on. She grabbed her favorite and we kept going and kids are just like the best. <laughs> that so, that's really interesting. It's so interesting to hear it from them when they realize like at some level that it's not, it might be normal because they're used to it, but it's not the ideal or it's not, it doesn't make them feel good and they can't have fun. So at the most basic level, even that's just what adults want to, right? Like to have a house that makes them feel good and they can have fun in. Exactly. Sarah, this was so just, I mean, I can just see that your heart is, I mean, saying that your heart is in the right place just doesn't even describe it. Like this really sounds, it sounds like your organizing business is really just like a manifestation of what you came to know about yourself and your anxiety and your past and your home and how everything works on different levels, emotionally and physically for you to live your best. And like you said, now, like you're grown and married and having a relationship and having a home that feels good. It is so, it sounds like it's so much more to you than just a personal story. Like this is now like become your personal mission. Yeah. And, and I hope that, you know, that you feel more and more, um, empowered, like you said, to share that with clients, because I think that that you know, really opens their eyes to, um, the fact that professional organizers are not all perfect. Um, you know, walking container store models of, you know, perfection in their own home, but also that you really get it. 
like, you know, you, you understand, um, emotionally, like what they've gone through and like what it means to them to now be doing the work with you. Like that's a huge, huge, huge step. So gosh, I'm like so proud that you're, that you're um, embracing that and willing to share with us too, because I think this is really going to inspire other organizers to um, maybe just be a little bit more vulnerable in sharing their story with, with their own clients. Definitely. That was like one of my big hopes was that, me sharing my story for other organizers or people who are thinking about being organizers that they could realize that, you know, all these little details of their life really have set them on the path to being an organizer. And even though my growing up, I wasn't super organized and, you know, that's what a lot of people assume. I'm sure you're mm. just the most organized child. And I'm just like, yeah. no, I really wasn't. <laughs> and I really want people who are interested in organizing to realize that you don't have to be perfectly, perfectly organized to start helping other people organize because I was not perfectly ready at home, but I was already helping people all the time, mm-hmm. get stuff, work through clutter and organize Um, and it still, you know, was a learning process for me and it was a learning process for them. Yeah. And I really hope that this also just inspires other people to share more of their stories. Um, especially since we're small business owners, like the main perk of being a small business owner is the connection that you have with your customers and being able to build the brand that is just you. And I kind of knew I always wanted a brand that was me because I knew I had some unique aspect on life. And I'm really happy that it has, I've been able to stick with this for so long and build it up to be more about how I want to help people and why I'm helping the people and even the types of people that I help. Um, So I just hope this inspires people in a lot of different ways and encourages them to keep going especially if they feel like I don't have, you know, I don't have any schooling or I don't have all these special school skills or I, I'm not obsessed with like container store or stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. All those things. We all have our different styles and likes and dislikes and we all have our different sets of like skills and abilities. Mm-hmm. And that's like a big thing to take away is just, there are so many people out there that need our help. Yes. So there's going to be clients for however you help and whatever your organizing style looks like, there will always be clients for you that need your help with that. It's a beautiful message. It's a beautiful story. I am so glad that um, you came back on the podcast, Sarah, and congratulations, five years in business. Um, And not only that, but like really finding like a calling in life. And I, I just, there's no words for that. I can't, I'm so grateful for uh, you know, the kids and the adults and the older adults, like people of all ages who have gotten to work with you and experience your, um, your unique perspective on it. Um, because it does make such a, such an impact to have somebody go through it with you who really understands. So. Yes. Thank thank you so much for having me again. I was really excited to be back. Absolutely. Are you loving the pro organizer studio podcast? Help us reach new listeners and bring in even more amazing guests by leaving a review for T-Pop through your podcasting app. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.